Why would okay. anyone be listening in Germany? Well, I don't know, Stephen. That's your demographic problem, not mine. <laughs> Very glad to have this next guest on. Uh, not what you're used to on Ladder with Crowder, uh, shifting gears from politics a little bit, but uh, a guy who I've read for a while. You can pick up his book, actually, Starting Strength. It's probably the single book that anyone who's looking to get strong and uh, and healthy should read, startingstrength.com. Coach Mark Ripito, thank you for being on the show, sir. Oh, gosh, Stephen. Appreciate it, man. Thank you for having me on. And, uh, <laughs> What's that uh, sigh for right off the bat? You don't sound happy to be here. Oh, I, I am happy to be here. Of course I'm happy to be here. Uh, I mean, we're fellow travelers, right? Right. I'm, I'm in strength. You're into Planet Fitness. <laughs> 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 I've got a barbell gym. You go to Planet Fitness. <laughs> I know. I, I tell you what, I didn't know it was as bad as it was until I went. They don't have a squat rack. No, no. Oh, Stephen, look. Planet Fitness is not about fitness. That's just part of the name. They're a sales organization, and uh, they're a very effective sales organization. And uh, in fact, I'll tell you a story if you're you're up for it. If we want to segue back into your trolling situation you had with them earlier in the in the week, a uh, <laughs> long time ago when I first opened my gym in '84, uh, a uh, friend of mine was running a promotion, a sales promotion that really presage the uh, the model that, that Planet Fitness uses right now. They're primarily designed to uh, appeal to people that are not going to use the membership. Right. That's their whole deal. Their sales model is sell cheap memberships to people who will not use a gym membership, but that are cheap enough that people will not stop the draft on. That's the whole model. Right. And uh, we had a, a deal. It was a drawing kind of a lead box-based promotion back a long time ago that said that you want a free membership to the Wichita Falls Athletic Club uh, as a consolation prize that somebody's going to win a vacation to Hawaii. Uh, all you have to do to claim this free membership to the gym is to come in and pay the maintenance fees of $96, right. which was not like $53 a year, no, 46 or I can't do the math, but uh, yeah, it was $96 for two years worth, and you had a two-year membership for 96 bucks. Now, people that are regular gym members don't put their name in lead boxes anyway. So the thing generated quite a bit of cash up front, and it generated a, a grand total of about five people that used that membership for the next two years. Wow. Out of the hundreds of people that signed up for this thing, five of them. I'll tell you what, though. I've been a, a member of some of those gyms that aren't quite Planet Fitness, but they have you know a few squat racks, and their goal is to get as many to sign up with cheap rates. And sometimes you do join up, and you know how to use it properly, and you're the only person in the gym, and it's great. Uh, there was a gym actually in Texas that I went to, which actually, funnily that you talk about it. And that's why I wanted to bring you on, too. A lot of people don't realize this. I mean, you're more libertarian. I, I'm libertarian conservative. What bothers me about the fitness industry is the scamming. Uh, I mean, for example, yeah. I have my wife right now, and she you're cannot cool. find a trainer who will get her doing the right things. No, it, no, and won't great. listen to me. Does, <laughs> what, what was that? I hear you muttering uh, angrily. It's a, it's, a, it's a problem within this industry. This, is a, this, is, this industry is, is such that you walk in – to a fitness industry gym and the kid's got a shirt on that says trainer. Right. Right. How do you know that? How does a lay person know the difference between him and me? I well, would, he does. By your sweet right. pecs? And there's not any way to tell. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, Don't do that again. But it, I, there's not any, any way for a lay person to tell. And it's a, it's a problem. It really is. Yeah, well, and that being said, uh, my first gym ever, I've talked about this on air, was Energy Cardio. It was the only gym around Montreal where I was on the South Shore that would allow my parents to sign off. I was 13. I was a fat little kid, and it was the only gym that would allow my parents to sign off on uh, me going without them being present. And uh, they didn't have a squat rack. They had all the other freeways, so their dumbbells did go up to, to their credit to 110 pounds. 
So um, I was allowed to do deadlifts, and I did those. I wasn't really able to squat for the first few years, which obviously you're a big proponent of that. But um, I remember that, and it wasn't the best gym, but it was better than nothing. And our school, and Canadian schools, there were there were no athletic programs. We didn't have any serious free weights, so um, wasn't like American kids have it. And uh, that started me on my journey. And then the the really serious games came. Actually, it wasn't your program, but very similar. Bill Stars, uh, five times five. And, uh, you know, it changed changed my life. I think a lot of people out there don't realize, we talked about this with Brett McKay, the strenuous life, challenging yourself every day to better yourself as a man, as a woman, as a person, is very important. And that's where you talk about progressive overloading with training is, is a great example of that. If you do it, you'll get better and you'll, you'll become stronger. Uh, I think it's very important to for any human being to know where their limits are. Yes. Uh, because if you don't know where the limits are, then you have no idea what you can in fact do. Mm -hmm. And the only way to find, to know where your limits are is to exceed them occasionally. Right. And uh, it takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of, most people aren't willing to do it. No, and it's a lot easier. Like you talk about the fitness industry. You know, my wife has never done a squat. And the fact is, I'll tell you this. This is a true story. It just happened yesterday. She went in with a personal trainer. I handed him. I handed them your book. I said, I want her doing this. I'm paying for a glorified babysitter. She won't listen to me. And they, they didn't ever do any of it. But well, they, there's, a, there's a saying in the in, in amongst these strength coaches. You 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 can't coach uh, your wife. No. Okay. Well, that's a pretty simple thing. You cannot. You, it, that doesn't work. It, it just doesn't work. Well, I will tell you this. Uh, so that happened, and they had her doing everything except squatting. We have to go to the break, so I'll finish this and that, let you take that's the range okay. when we come back. But she's tall. She's six foot, and she's slim, and she's gorgeous. She modeled for a long time. That's nature. And the first what? thing the trainer asked, he said, listen, I'll give you a discount if you let me put you on my blog as an after picture, taking credit for God's work. <laughs> um, we will be right, <laughs> we'll be right back with Coach Mark Ripito, ladder with Crowder. Stay tuned. Very excited back with the one and only Coach Mark Ripito. I said that, told you that story before the break. And isn't that the truth? And people come in and say, hey, can you make me look like Mrs. Crowder? And it's just the way she was born. You can't. Right. Well, that, that's an interesting, that's an interesting topic and I, I i think you have stumbled onto uh one of the problems with the strength and conditioning business in in general the strength and conditioning business nowadays is largely uh uh it's this is a deceptive mess um yeah extremely extremely talented athletes are extremely talented athletes because they were born that way right and in terms of their athletic talent, all of the skipping around in the floor and balance drills and high-level D1 college-looking activities that are designed to hone the abilities of very, very talented athletes are a complete, absolute waste of time. Extremely talented athletes aren't made any better by these types of just look around at D1 college programs. They're not made any better by these these exercises and right. activities that are designed to display talent. Right. They are displaying talent that's already there. They aren't developing anything. Sure. And you know the 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 model is uh, that uh, strength and conditioning coaches, strength and conditioning coaches. Am I saying that right? Strength and conditioning coaches are primarily primarily designed uh they primarily designed their activity and time in the gym around activities that are designed to display the talent of the athlete which sure. in in the model of the industry is designed to display the talent of the coach it doesn't it just right. you know like well, like CrossFit, it, uh, it's a lot of those things now where it started. I know you were worked with it, but I have guys coming going. Look, I can do a single leg overhead barbell squat on top of a kettlebell. <laughs> and I say, why? Why? <laughs> why? Well, it's good. It's good that you can do that. You're talented enough to do that. That's wonderful. Right. But now the question becomes: As a strength and conditioning coach, what do I do to make you better? Have you do the other leg 
you just displayed to me a, a fantastic talent for balance. You know, uh, D1 programs primarily recruit on the basis of uh, uh, a, a suite of activities that are centered around measuring vertical jump because these indicate the uh, the set of explosive athletic genetics that sure. you're looking for. Uh, you take a guy with a 36 inch vertical. He's going to make any coach look pretty good because he's a good athlete. Right. Whether the coach does anything for him or not is largely irrelevant because he already looks good because that's why you recruited. Well, let me ask you this before we get off into, you have to understand a lot of people listening aren't that far along the trail. So, well, let me ask you this. What would be your advice to someone who's not elite? Yeah. Get stronger. Yes. Even if you are elite. The one thing that you can always control is to get stronger. Anybody can get stronger. Unless you are a strength specialist, anybody can get stronger. And for anyone, old person that doesn't do athletics, young 18-year-old kid looking to go to college and play sports, the most important thing they can do is the thing that they can make the most difference doing, right. and that is a strength program. Right. And you know what? I will say this. Uh Brazilian jiu-jitsu grappling, which is, I guess, sort of my sport. I mean, I'm not in a, if you're not in a pro sport, you're not in college. You either have to pick something. Um, my dad's more accomplished in, a, in the competitive realm. A lot of them just don't get stronger. Like, I'm going to work on technique. And that obviously is important, and we've talked about this off air. There is a point of diminishing returns. And as someone who's strength trained my whole life, I know where that is, where I go, okay, now it's time to maintain this because 10 more pounds on this barbell at the end of the year – is not going to be time best served compared to spending time on my sport. But getting to that baseline is so important. Well, but, but, but that, 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 see, people have a, an extremely uh, uh, skewed perspective about where that baseline is. Sure. And I, I, a guy like you, you're 27, six foot, 205. No, no, I'm 6'2, uh, 220. 6'2, 220. Uh, Stephen, you ought to be squatting, uh, you know, 475 or set five. And the fact that you're not indicates to me that you're not at baseline yet. See what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. My yeah. Point. And that's impressive. You but uh, you don't have the appreciation for what the baseline actually yeah, is. Yeah. But I will say this, Mark. And I do, I love your book. And I recommend it actually to my producer here, to everyone who's starting strength. And you give me crap for the unilateral work that I did earlier. But you have to understand, I did have two severely herniated discs. I lost all actual motor function in my legs. They were pricking me with pins. Um, so at, there was a time where I had to focus on maximal loading that I could with minimal spinal compression. And that was where I found a system that worked for me to maintain strength and actually increase flexibility, mobility, um, to the point where I felt like I could get back to barbells. Now, I will say this. Um, did you ever get back to barbells? I'm, right now, I am. Yeah. What What are you deadlifting now? Well, yeah, I don't deadlift. I, I don't deadlift right now. I do squats <laughs> and benches, and overhead press. I mean, you know, I have a torn rotator. I told you that before. I tore my rotator. I have a torn right. I did twenty three pull ups. Did you? At two twenty. I, I did eighteen pull ups at a fat man's body weight of about. Okay, I don't want to get into this competition because here's a fact. I said in my fifty four year old father. And he would be the least efficient at lifting barbells, and he would choke everyone in your gym out. And that's the skill set that's most important to me is combat. I understand that, but what I'm saying to you <laughs> that a guy with with extremely high skill level, right? Extremely high skill level that doubles his squat, sure. all of a sudden got better without improving his skills. I agree, but let me say this: I agree that's completely. Fine. My whole point. Right? I agree completely. But if you look at like heavyweight champions right now, like Boucher, Cher, people like that, um, there is a point, and I don't know that you've ever tried to gain strength while doing grappling or wrestling six, seven sessions a week. It is very, very difficult to do. It's very catabolic. It's very hard. If I do grappling, even when I tone down the, the strength training to three times a week, um, it is very hard for me to get above 205. So. Well what I'm suggesting to you is that it might be to your advantage to maybe get stronger, which takes twice a week in that sure. context. Work those two strength training sessions in so that your strength would progress. And that total benefit 
uh, obtained by doing that might very well make up for the loss of time on the map. Oh, and that's what I'm doing right now because I can't spend time on the map. If I, uh, to give you an idea, that's a great example with your program. It is, um, it's obviously, you know, there's so, only so much recovery you have. So when I mm -hmm. was doing your program and lifting pretty heavy right now uh, and just did some drilling and mitt work was incredibly sore. It was very difficult to recover from both activities, and that's why I've put that on hold because of the injuries. Um, but I do. I advocate your program or something similar, generally your program exactly, for everyone I know who's starting lifting. We're actually getting this gentleman here who's – we won't bring him in, but my producer, Jared, who is uh, 145 pounds and needs to start lifting heavy. But I do want to get to the sort of the macro issue here. I'm writing a column right now, and you can tell me if you agree or disagree. I believe that we've reached a point in the Planet Fitness thing. It wasn't about the transgender deal or the cross-dressing. It was about, I truly believe, and you talk about this with, with weightlifting, and I think in every aspect of life, you have to look at yourself, correct yourself, and at the end of the day, you have to look yourself in the mirror and say, did I do everything I could do to get better? Have I done everything I can to prepare for whatever your job may be? If so, yes, let's get to work. But now, if I were raised in modern, politically correct, liberal America, I believe I would be fat, weak, and feel good about myself. Sure. Because we've gotten to a point, and I will say this flat out, liberalism creates fat, weak, young men who feel good about being, and not just, I'm not talking about physically, in character. And if you look at people like Roosevelt and Abraham Lincoln, that's, I use this term, the strenuous life. They talked about every day pushing yourself a little bit. Do you have a lot of people who come in, or young men, who just don't have that sensibility of, hey, this is going to be hard, and that's what's beautiful in it? I don't know that uh, most people that start this program think in those terms. Okay. I think that uh, they they come in understanding that this is what they need, but they haven't they haven't couched it in terms of uh, of uh, their uh, place on the political spectrum. Uh, you and I can be philosophical about this, but uh, and and we did. But uh, because we've got time to do that. But a kid that's, you know, working full time at Sonic Drive-In, he's 19 years old, he's underweight, he knows he needs to be bigger. He doesn't think about it in those terms. He just knows that everything he's tried before hasn't worked. And he knows that he's heard that what we can do can help him so he comes in. Uh, but stepping back from the, uh, uh, from the immediate nature of such a thing, uh, I, I agree with your bigger point. I agree with your point that uh, the pressure now is is to be accepting of complacency. Sure. Because complacency is easier. And complacency is the kind of thing that uh, enables people to feel good about themselves when somebody else tells them that that's really all you need to do. Why right. push hard? Why push hard? Why, why, uh, why test your own limits? Right. Uh, uh, we're here to make those limits nice and low. We're here to make you comfortable, and comfort is the most important thing you can be, and and satisfied with yourself and high self esteem and all that other stuff. Uh, you you've got uh, this is kind of a kind of an odd time and the history of the human race, I think. <laughs> I know to, For those of you I, listening terrestrially, Mark has the most disgusted look on his face that I can is, imagine. This is an odd, odd time. It's, uh, it, it really is. Uh, we've got, on the one hand, a society where PSAs on the radio are telling us one in four people are struggling with hunger. Those of you listening on terrestrial radio have heard this PSA sure. on the station uh, today. One in four. I'm one of one in four. I'm I'm the person that rides up the elevator with you, and I'm struggling with hunger. Yet, what's the obesity rate in the United States? Right. Well, you guys make up your mind. All right. We can't have it both ways. And the 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 politically expedient nature of both of these messages, the fact that they conflict with each other, doesn't seem to bother anybody. I and mean, it's just real strange. Yeah. So, 
It's also funny to me, you know, you have Michelle Obama who declared it a national crisis, right? A bigger threat than global terrorism. Well, hunger thing or the obesity? No, the obesity thing. But I always say... She needs to listen to more radio. <laughs> because if she did, she'd understand that one in four is struggling sure. with hunger. Well, I don't think she's struggling with hunger, and that wasn't what I was implying, but I guess I just said it now. We'll be right back with Coach Mark Ripto after this break where we'll see how much more inappropriate we can get. Back in this next hour, we went through the hour, and now we're still back with Coach Mark Ripto. Before this, we were talking about hunger versus obesity in this country. And that's a good point. You know, I talk about that, though, too. If obesity is our biggest epidemic, as some leftists say, I go, well, I mean, if you had to pick your problem out of a, a pile, wouldn't that be the one you would first pick, a problem of overabundance and choice? I, I can't imagine a better problem to have. Ah, the perils of capitalism, overabundance. Yes. As opposed to the manufactured nonsense of struggling with hunger. Um, right. This is, uh, as I said, this is an interesting, this is an interesting time in the history of the human race. We've got... Uh, um, a, a giant dichotomy, and I know this is what bothers leftists. We have a huge segment of the world's population that don't get enough to eat. Right. And then again, here we are in the United States where you can walk in to a grocery store, you can walk into Walmart and buy pre made pancakes. Wait, the pancakes are already made, or do you mean the mix? I can understand that the dichotomy bothers people. Okay. But my position is that the dichotomy is not my problem. The dichotomy is the problem of the third world who refuses to embrace the idea that private property and free market capitalism provides for pre-made pancakes. Okay? And I, I'm using this as a metaphor for the, for the whole thing. But uh, I don't know if you really want to get me started. No, on I don't think I do. I don't we think I do. Everything. Out of time here, and I'm, I know. You know talk well, about this for quite a while. No, I I agree with you. Well, I mean, listen, they don't have the problem of obesity. You know, try getting some Zambian famine victims' head around it. They won't even be able to comprehend that your problem is you have too much to eat. Try to find a dose of uh, anorexia nervosa in Zambia. I look yeah. look for it. Me too. I also don't you think know. you have a lot of bodybuilders oiled and tanned bitching about their calves. So it goes probably both. Not, probably not Zambia. <laughs> No. no, probably not the body dysmorphia on either side. So we get back to, you know, you talk about getting stronger. Let me ask you this. Okay. To go back to strength training, do you, how do you handle it? I've gotten to a point in my life where I am just so tired with the BS, and I feel like it's everywhere, and it's no more prevalent than in the supplement industry and the fitness industry. Planet Fitness is an example, but it's, I mean, literally I cannot find one decent personal trainer to to whom I can take my wife. And we are just if literally you're looking, if you're looking at Planet Fitness for a decent personal trainer, you seem to have some serious misconceptions about this. No, not Planet Fitness. Look, like I'm tell like I like I told you, the the vast majority. Planet Fitness is on the extreme end of, right. of this continuum. You've got uh the standard industry model gyms, which are basically sales organizations. And then you've got on the far other end of the spectrum, places like Wichita Falls Athletic Club out the door here, that has a sign on the door that says uh, Wichita Falls Athletic Club is a private strength training facility and uh, membership is by invitation only. Uh, we turn people away here that uh, don't sufficient. Uh, sufficiently appreciate what it is we're trying to do. Okay, well, let me real quick, because people well, are going to attack you. In the middle is, uh, you know, there is the the functional training expression of the of the business that's come along. CrossFit's part of that. Uh, there are right in the middle is is really where more trainers ought to be, and they're not. Right. Uh, well, they're, they're in a position you. to serve a larger percentage of the population. Sure. Now, let me ask you this, because people will say, you turn people away. See, that's why Planet Fitness exists. You just want to judge fat people. Now, I know that you've trained, you have some old ladies who train at your gym. It's not about where you are. It's about how serious you are with self-improvement, right? right? Yeah. Yes. It's, it's about uh, whether you came into the gym for 
the fact that we have a logical arithmetical model for making you stronger. Start where you are now, go up a little bit every day, right? Or if you came in for pizza night, you know, if you came in for pizza night, yeah, we're going to probably draw a conclusion based on that. Based on that, is that judgment? Well, I guess you know whatever you want. That's just semantics, okay? Yeah. But uh, no, my ninety-one-year-old gal that, that trains in here. Uh, it will be in here tomorrow about noon, in fact, oh. is capable of doing an unassisted body weight squat below parallel. Wow, good for her. And that's been a long process, but we've gotten her to the point where she hasn't fallen down in, in a year. She doesn't use her walker anymore. That's been in her closet for about 10 months. And uh, the same process that we use for athletes we use for her right we started at a different place sure and it's funny you know i see that and people see the planet fitness thing and say no judgment because we don't want to be mean i hear that story that you just tell me and i think how mean are you other personal trainers to rob this woman of that experience of the opportunity yeah to put her walker in the closet at the age of 91 good for her are there any pictures online or videos yeah, we've got a little video online of, of just look up Gus, G-U-S, uh, Mrs. Virginia Gustafson Razan. Uh, look up Gus, W-F-A-C, and there'll be a nice little video that comes up. 91 years old. Jeez, well, that just goes to show people listening. Follow the same process that you, Stephen Crowder, need to be doing. I am doing it right now. Oh, I, look, all right, let me ask you a question. Then. Uh, I'm off to come coach you. And you've said, oh. You've never offered to come coach me. Okay. No, 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 hold on a second. Don't make me mute your mic. Don't make me mute your microphone. Because you just asked me if I did deadlifts on air. When you were the one who specified, you said, oh, you got a torn rotator cuff? Yeah, good mornings are good. You should do those. You don't need to be deadlifting or doing power no, cleans. I didn't say anything about good mornings. Look, I had this, ro this shoulder rotator cuff repaired. And you know what I did? Three weeks post-op, I deadlifted 315. Because... Deadlifts don't bother a torn rotator. Well, they do mine. Well, maybe that's not what you've got. Well, maybe it's not what I've got. <laughs> it's diagnosis. But everyone listening, I'm following his protocol. I called him with questions. He said, yeah, that actually seems good. If you can do it and it's not irritating your back, those are good replacements. And then he comes on here and tries to throw me under the bus. So I'll tell you what. I will I say this. I remember saying I've told you. <laughs> well, you certainly didn't offer to come out and train me. You were asking me about the Cherry Festival. Hey, I, right now, I'm telling you on air. I'll come train you. Okay. Right? Okay. Right. You come out here. I will be glad to. And you can train my wife. Yeah. I, right. And you can. <laughs> I start with her. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I start with her. Put her up on starting strength and say, "Look, yeah. look at my handiwork." Oh God. Yeah, she's a very, uh, she's a very, she's way out of my league. Okay. Um, there was something else I was going to ask you. I don't even remember what it was. Now that we got off the the beaten uh, off the beaten path, I was going to say this. Okay, you do talk, do you talk about strength training? If mm -hmm. I may, uh, uh, sort of parlay that into something. I don't know if you've ever been on the grappling mats, but I would invite you to go on there once no, because everyone should I, get their ass kicked once. It's good for your soul. I, I got my ass kicked way more than once. It's good to realize. <laughs> How a Marcelo Garcia-looking character, who you would see in the gym and see as weak, can feel so strong and absolutely end your life at any time they want to, just to realize that strength is important, but it does not make a complete oh, human. No, I, I tell you what, is even more important than strength, youth. I don't know. I've... Guys like you, enjoy it while you've got it. Once you accumulate all the injuries I've got. You know, at one time, uh, I was about you know, halfway tough. Now I'm just old. Yeah. I'll tell you what though. We've had guys who came in who were halfway tough. We've had division. We've had pro football players come in and um, just get their, just, just the life choked out of them. There's nothing oh, they can do about sure. it. Not everybody can do everybody else's sport. You this know? is true. Thank God I don't have to deal with that. I just deal with <laughs> the thing that makes everybody's sport better. And that's getting strong. That's getting strong. That is absolutely yeah. true. And on that, we completely agree. And it has to be done with, Certainly, heavy weights for people who are starting with measurable loading uh, increase. This right. is the process. Really? I Start thought... People are now add five pounds of workout. Well, uh, that's the process. I uh. thought I could just go CrossFit 
and go ape crap crazy with a barbell and train for randomness. What you're blowing my mind. Do things at, at, in, in random. Now that doesn't seem to work. In other words, you can't learn to play the piano by a combination of attempting to play the saxophone, the guitar, and digging a hole in the backyard. So, <laughs> well, what age do you cross over into the nonsensical? <laughs> I'm kidding. What about fifty. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we have to we have to get going, and uh, maybe we'll maybe we'll keep you on for another online segment. But for terrestrial, we must say goodbye. Where can people best find you, Mark? Startingstrength.com is my website. I'm there way too much of the day, so feel Starting... free to post. Feel free to, to contact me through that website. Our books and uh, DVD are for sale on that website. We're also available on Amazon.com. Our German translation is available on Amazon.de. Aha. You don't need to say dot com. You're gonna throw the HTTP in there? It's the D and we're at the, the, the German translation's at Amazon.de. If they're in and Germany, I'm sure it that. reroutes them. Okay. Why would anyone be listening in Germany? Well, I don't know, Stephen. That's your demographic problem, not mine. Okay. Once you get big enough, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Ripito, uh, startingstrength.com. Whether you're 91 years old or 19, I highly recommend it. Mark, thanks for being with us, brother. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, subscribe by clicking my face uh, or click this video next to me. It's playing right now in a box. How do we do that? That's the magic of the internet. Is it still playing? I'm still playing. I don't want to look at it. It's still playing, isn't it?